Each character of the Chrono Trigger cast has a special place in our hearts. Be it Chrono's radical haircut, Luca and her love of machines, or Marl's childlike innocence, there seems to be something for everyone. However, the subject of today's character spotlight has captured the imagination and attention of an entire generation of gamers in a way few others have. Whether it was surfing the web in the internet's Wild West days, for hidden quests to save her, or countless forums and discussions on what ultimately befell her after the Ocean Palace disaster, the tragic princess of zeal, Shala, is one of the most beloved and enigmatic characters in gaming history. When the party first meets her, she is speaking with her brother Janus about the Black Wind, an ominous force said to present him with glimpses of the future, or at least grim portents associated with it, which causes him distress. Shala tells him to ignore it, and presents him with the amulet which she says will protect him. She's soon rushed off by an attendant woman who says that the queen demands her presence. She notices the party for but a second when the woman pleads with her to hurry or else she'll be punished. This scene is so important, but you may not think so on a first playthrough. The events that take place afterward are so powerful and overwhelming, it's easy to overlook minor details. More on this later. When you follow Shala, you find that her pendant is the same as Marl's, and allows her access to the throne room. Yours doesn't work, but with a few helpful hints, you find that Shala's pendant is made from the same red rock as the Mammoth Machine, and it glows when she chants with it. Shala's pendant, and incidentally Marl's, is an incredibly important item in the Chrono universe, and, in fact, was the catalyst for the entire adventure. Thanks to Chrono Cross, we know that it is made from a shard of the frozen flame, a splinter of Labos' shell which resides within the Mammoth Machine. The three gurus worked together to create it and gifted it to her. Now, you may be thinking, why would the gurus have created such a thing if they knew the power of Labos would end in ruin? A fair point. However, chances are that they simply did not know the dangers of such power when Zeal first proposed it as a new energy source. Presumably, they have only been using Labos' emanations for a short time before the party arrives in 12,000 BC, and it was likely very shortly after that the gurus realized the mistake they had made. Regardless, entrusting such a powerful relic to Shala was probably a well-informed decision amongst the three of them, as her powers far exceed those of her mother and, should anything go awry, would be able to divert tragedy with its magic. Either way, you power up your pendant and rush the throne room, where Dalton meets you in battle with his golem. Win or lose, you're captured and imprisoned, where Shala later comes to your aid, begging you to rescue Melchior on Mount Will. It's unknown whether she knows Melchior can stop the Mammon Machine, or if she is even aware of the Red Knife's existence. But you don't have a chance to find out, as Magus, disguised as the Prophet, forces her to seal the gate after throwing you in, barring you from the era entirely. The next time we hear of Shala is at al -Gedi Village, home of the Earthbound Ones. Most of the inhabitants speak ill of the Enlightened Ones, who live above the clouds. But Shala seems to be a rare exception, as she receives nothing but praise and good tidings from them for treating them as equals. It's also implied that she was the one who created the Skyway, which allows the Earthbound Ones access to Zeal although the unintended results of which saw hundreds of them enslaved to construct the Ocean Palace. Anyway, you climb the Mountain of Woe, save Melchior, and arrive back at the Elder's Cave in El Gedi, where Shala appears once again, happy to see that Melchior has been freed. Almost immediately, likely because he followed her after she reactivated the Skyway, Dalton appears and captures her, vowing to take her to Queen Zeal in the Ocean Palace where the Mammon Machine had now been moved to extract even more energy from Labos. As the party fights its way down the newly completed Undersea Palace, we see glimpses of what is happening below. Queen Zeal forces Shala to raise the power of the Mammon Machine with her pendant, disregarding the obvious pain she's in, and even murders one unfortunate man who protests the ritual. When we finally arrive upon the scene and the Massa Moon impales the machine, Lavos awakens and annihilates the party. Soon after, Shala and Zeal appear. Shala, still begging her mother to stop this madness, finds herself without the strength to fight Lavos' power. Finally, after Chrono's sacrifice, she and the party are transported back to the foot of the Mammon machine, defeated. Shala, perhaps following Chrono's lead, sends the party to safety with the last of her pendant strength despite Magus's momentary protest. She then utters Chrono's name, and we are left to watch as Zeal is torn apart by Lavos. The 
This is the last time we ever see Shala in the original Chrono Trigger. For the sake of my sanity, I'm going to stick with that version and a bit of the DS release for the rest of this video. Now, we cannot talk about Shala without addressing a very big elephant in the room. Keep in mind, this was the early days of the internet, and we were not prepared for just how much information, especially sketchy information, was on the horizon for us. What followed the scene in the Ocean Palace was a flood of fan theories. Everything from getting all your characters to double star levels and 99 of every item, beating the game with Magus at 1 HP, a convoluted and contrived quest chain to obtain a secret Shala clone and resurrect her on Death Peak. It was endless. It seemed like the whole world thought she was supposed to survive, or that there was some secret way of saving her that would add her to your party. The first Chrono Trigger website I ever came across and frequented daily was Icy Brian's. Not to go too far down memory lane here, but when I found this site, I felt like I'd found my people. Everything from fan fiction, fan art, speculation, oddities, and more could be found there, and still can. Though most of us have found our place at Chrono Compendium these days, Icy Brian's website still exists to this day as a testament to that time. Anyway, back to the point. His website had links to similar pages. I don't remember the actual name of this site, but I do remember the name Salt. And on his site was the most notorious rumor of Shala being a playable character that I'd ever seen. She purportedly had a combination of Magus's text, along with a lot of the rainbow-style ones we'd seen from certain enemies throughout the game. Prism Beam, Palation, whatever that move the aliens and Specchio counterattack with, and was said to use a Prism Boomerang as a weapon. Funny how that very weapon would be able to be obtained in Chrono Cross years later. This whole thing captivated me and likely many others to begin searching. I must have tried everything I could think of to avert the Ocean Palace disaster. Finding clues and dialogue, attempting to land in different spots on the 12,000 BC map for a secret dungeon, even finally using my Game Genie for the infamous walk on the 1999 AD map code. And just to illustrate how much of a pain that was, here are the original instructions from Icy Brian's website on how to use the code. Look at those instructions. But we did it. We all did it. And nothing. It was very soon after that I discovered that the post was made on April Fool's Day, and my hopes were dashed. Now, there is a ROM hack out there made by someone that makes a lot of this a reality, called Chrono Trigger Shala Edition, which kind of is a payoff for all of our hard work, but it doesn't really change how frustrated we were at the time. It wouldn't be until Chrono Cross that we learned her true fate. But as I said, I'm going to try to stick to Trigger in this particular video. Remember when I said the bedroom scene was easily overlooked, yet wildly important? Imagine, if you will, this very moment when she asks you who you are. If this woman had not been so pushy. Imagine an uninterrupted conversation between Shala and the party, revealing everything from your ability to time travel, the absence of the Zeal Kingdom in the future, and the eventual destruction caused by Labos in 1999 AD. What major plot points would have been changed? How much of the 12,000 BC art could have gone very differently? Imagine a world in which, now wielding true knowledge of the future, Shala opposed her mother far before the Ocean Palace's completion and before your capture. A world where even the destruction of Zeal was avoided, and perhaps floats above the clouds throughout the rest of history, reverting to the power of the elements and prospering. Maybe even having an army of Zeal wizards at your side to fight Lavos in the far-flung future. How cool would that have been? But no. This lady ruined everything. Now, to be fair, however, it wasn't just her. Queen Zeal, Magus, Dalton, Lavos. It seems that any time the ghost of a chance at a private word with Shala presented itself, someone was there to interfere and stop you from altering fate. Now obviously I'm being facetious, as removing Shala from this point in history would cause untold ripples through space-time and change the course of history for potentially the worse. Either way, Shala, though powerful, is also a very pure and loving individual. Adored by the earthbound and enlightened ones alike, very caring of her younger brother, and even after everything she'd done, still deeply cared for her mother, the queen, even begging you not to hate her. 
Now, although I won't touch on Chrono Cross just yet, I would be remiss if I did not mention the extra ending in Chrono Trigger for the DS, where we find Shala once more. Here, she is fused with a new life form known as the Dream Devourer, which feeds on dreams and memories, perhaps an intermediary evolutionary stage of Lavos before he would eventually become the Time Devourer after merging with the Dragon God. Magus, undeterred by the beast, frantically tries to save his sister, to no avail, and Shala, knowing that he can never save her, and wishing her brother to be free of pain, teleports him away in sorrow to forget who he is, and, in turn, that he ever had a sister to begin with. In conclusion, it seems that Shala's popularity within the Chrono Trigger universe also stretches well outside of it. I still know many people who say she is their favorite character, not only in Chrono Trigger, but in all of video game. And why not? She's pretty and intelligent, kind yet powerful, and all in all has a very well-written and likable personality. We may never have her on our team, or get to experience her reuniting with her brother, but it's better that way, really. It lends ever more to her charm and mystery. So thank you, Shala, for being such a unique addition to an already wildly unique cast of characters. I would resurrect you over Eris any day. Obviously, Shala's story does not end with Chrono Trigger, and there will be a part two on the horizon as soon as I get enough footage from Chrono Cross to do so. Either way, we'll see you next time for another character spotlight.